Good morning. Good morning to all of you here in our sanctuary and to those of you online. Good morning from the Owego United Methodist Church. And it is good to be together. We have um, so many wonderful opportunities for the body of Christ to serve. And so I want to just share that there's a knitting group this Tuesday at 10 o'clock downstairs. Um, my mother taught me to knit when I was young, and I love it. In fact, I love it so much that if I start a project, that's all I want to do. I love it that much. And perhaps there's other people that might understand that love for knitting. On Wednesday of this week at 9 o'clock, there's the men's group. And from 5 to 6-ish p.m. on every Wednesday, there is prayer time up in the prayer room upstairs in the Wesley House. And I want to let you know that my husband and I are dedicated to being there ourselves. We've just made that choice because prayer is such a foundation for everything. And... Uh, I would just really encourage you to consider 5 o'clock on Wednesdays. It's not long, and the benefits are huge, eternal. Um, of course, every Sunday at 9.30, where we have Sunday school in the Barton Education Room for all youth, ages 3 and up. It goes from 9.30 or, yeah, 9.30 to 10.15. And we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. Uh, there are new upper rooms in the back of the church for November and December. And please feel free to pick one up. Yeah, Saturday, yep. So before Saturday, on Thursday, is the um, Allied Christians of Tioga County dinner, 5 o'clock downstairs in our church. And Saturday at 2 o'clock is the annual charge conference for our church with our district superintendent, <clears throat> Reverend Bob Colvick Campbell, who will be presiding. And all members of the Uigo United Methodist Church have a voice and are encouraged to vote. So come along if you can. <clears throat> In the back of the sanctuary, we have sign-up sheets for liturgists and those who would like to provide any special music. Thank you, Lord. We have liturgists lined up for November, but December follows that, and would really encourage you to consider if the Lord is calling you for a Sunday in that regard. And um, we are so excited. It, it doesn't take much, and we have a box on the porch of the Wesley House that holds non-perishable food items that people can come and go and pick up and they pick them up they are really really needed out there and so next time you're grocery shopping if you would keep that in mind pick a little something up extra drop it off in the box on the porch we would appreciate it and um, the listening sessions still go on with pastor nancy uh, not this week she's in a training event between Tuesday and Thursday of this week, and so will not be available, but uh, it really is so beneficial. I'd like to think that every single person in our church would be interested in coming and just chit-chatting with Nancy. It's a, it's a lovely chit-chat session, and, and she has a heart for every single person and where you are at. Is there any other announcements I'm any from anyone else? Okay, so Lorraine and Dick Reynolds are are at absolute care. Thank you in the same room. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. I, I have an announcement. And 
That would be, let me, let me try to get the people at home to be able to see this as well. Um, as you're aware, we, um, we are going to be selling Christmas trees. That, this is our Christmas tree sign up, it's online. Um, it's at www.tinyurl.com slash OUMC Xmas trees. And you can see where we've got a few names filled in, but you can also see where we've got a lot of places without any names. So you can either go there yourself and uh, fill it out, or you can come to me. I'll try to get a paper copy, and we'll do like we've done in the past, where we've actually passed it around during the service um, to get people to sign up and try to get things synced up. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dave. So I would like to now uh, ask you to stand if you're able and join me in the call to worship. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who have gone before us. May we follow in their faithful footsteps. Let us join now in our first hymn, number 711, for all the saints.
and you may, oh, I'm sorry. Go for it. <laughs> you may be seated. Friends, I hope you were able to pay attention to the words. For all the saints who from their labors rest. And the words of that hymn that celebrate not only those saints who've gone before us, but their witness that has strengthened us. And that is why we are here. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray. The prayer of confession is printed in your bulletin and on the wall. Merciful God, forgive us when we have not faithfully lived out our witness to Jesus Christ. Remind us of those who have gone before us and the way they shared their faith. Help us to improve our witness so that our words and our actions will draw those around us to Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. In silence now, let us confess our personal sins to Almighty God. Hear the good news. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. As, high, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our sins from us. In the name of Jesus Christ, each one of us is forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Are there any kids out there who would like to come up? Or anyone of any age? How you doing? Good. You can come sit right here. Okay. And um, don't know if you brought any coins for Mr. Bear. Did you bring any coins for Mr. Bear? That's okay. That's okay. You can stay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So we're collecting uh, coins from Mr. Bear for the, the heifer project. Remember we talked about that in Sunday school this morning. And hopefully we'll get $20 so we can by either a basket of food or, or a flock of chicks to, to really help a family that we don't even know, which is pretty awesome. So, um, so is there any kind of special day that's tomorrow that you're thinking about? Halloween, yeah, yeah, Halloween, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, um, like, what, what's your favorite candy? What do you hope people give you the most, right? Hmm? Do you have a favorite candy? Skittles. Okay. I like M&Ms. How, how about you, Coraline? Like like Skittles. You like what? You like Skittles too? Okay. I like M&Ms. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say to me? Okay. Is there anything you'd like to say to me? No? Really? You sure? Really? There's nothing you want to say to me? No? Hmm. I'm getting full over here. I really wish there's something you'd like to say to me. Is this nice of me? To eat in front of you. Hmm? Was that nice of me? No? Because I'm still doing it. Hmm? What? Do you have any suggestions for me? 
before I maybe should ah you think I should share with you? you think I that's what Caroline said. That's what Caroline okay. <laughs> Coraline, you're on top of it. All right. You're right. I should share with you. So part of why we put coins in Mr. Bear is to share with folks that need our help, right? That wasn't very nice of me not to share with you because it's something I had and I didn't share with you. And as followers of Jesus, he wants us to share with those who don't have as much as we do, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah? Yep. Brothers are fine. <laughs> All right. So guess what? I'm sorry, I don't have Skittles. But I have evidence for you, okay? All right, now. I already got Oh, okay, I was going to give you more, but if you, if you only want one, that's okay. You want, you want another one? Okay. All right, now, I just made a mistake because I gave you those before we prayed. So, let's pray. Would you pray after me? Dear God, thank you for all you've given to us. Help us to share with those don't, who don't have as much as we do. As followers of Jesus, Help us always to share his love with everybody. Amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats now. Wow, they're not coins either. Wow, wonderful. Thank you so much. That is awesome. Okay. So Friends, at this time, we are going to name those who have gone before us in our, our church family this past year. I understand um, we may have missed someone. Um, I already know one, and that's Tim Todd, so we'll be naming him. If there are other names of folks we missed or of folks that you want to remember, um, after I have read every name that's in the bulletin, um, you are welcome to uh, share other names, okay? So, and you can just call them out. Um, I want to thank uh, Ruthie Williams for... Um, being our bell ringer this morning. So after each name, she's going to ring the bell once. Um, okay? In a spirit of thankfulness, we remember Glenn Alpa, Gloria Bidwell, Jack Denmark, Pat Dory, Charlie Gilbert, Conrad Kishbaugh, Marilyn Oakes, Eric Peterson, Kay Potter. George Reese, Virginia Rhodes, 
Renata Shang, Tim Todd, Ken Wood. Are there others? Thank you. Thank you, Ruthie. And friends, as we come to our time of prayer, um, we want to remember uh, Ed Vandemark. I know um, Linda died a week ago, or a year ago this week. Um, and uh, she was named at, at last year's service, um, but um, we want to remember uh, Ed. Uh, Ed is um, uh, had COVID and is, is still uh, struggling with that. Um, so, and we also uh, want to remember uh, Carolyn Gwynn. Um, I guess, uh, Larnard, she stopped by this morning and she wasn't uh, feeling up to be in here. Is that correct? So, so we want to remember Carolyn Gwynn. Um, do you have other joys or concerns to share? Is that John Wickland over there? So good to see you back. All right. Been a long haul. So wonderful. Wonderful. Anyone else? Let's go to God in prayer. Ever loving and living God, we are grateful for your presence with us this morning, and thank you, thank you, thank you for those saints who have gone before us in the faith. Who shared their love of Jesus with us. And Lord, We are just so grateful for their witness, for their legacy. For the path that they paved for us. For so many, hearts are still heavy. And Lord, you know we don't get over grief. But with your help, we get through it. We don't ever stop missing our loved ones. But thank you for blessing us with them. Comfort us as only you can. And Lord, we pray for, for those around the world whose lives are very different from our own. We pray for those who live in war-torn Ukraine. I 
and for those in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in the Sudan, and when we pray for an end between Israelis and Palestinians and just, Lord, wherever there is strife, Lord, in our own country, between Republicans and Democrats, Lord, heal the divide. Help us to see each other as persons of sacred worth for whom Christ died. Because that is who we are. And that's who that other person is too. Lord, we pray for President Biden and other world leaders. Give them wisdom, strength, courage. Lord, we pray for our church leaders, for our bishop, Mark Webb, and our district superintendent, Bob Colvick Campbell, that you would give them wisdom and strength and courage as they lead on our behalf. Lord, we lift up the women's Emmaus walk this coming Thursday through Sunday. Come, Holy Spirit, upon that weekend, upon all the, the team members and the pilgrims who are coming. Holy Spirit, make your presence known in an unmistakable way. And Lord, we pray for those in need of your healing, touch in body, mind, spirit, relationship, or situation. For Bella, for Donnie, for Bev and Judy, for Chris and Dave, Julie, for Dick and Lorraine, for Alan. Lord, we thank you that John is able to be back with us today. For Jerry for the family of George Reese and the family of Eric Peterson and all who mourn. We lift up Carolyn and Ed who are not feeling well. Bring your healing touch upon them as well. And Lord, we pray for this congregation of the Owego United Methodist Church. Come, Holy Spirit, upon us. Set us on fire for you that we would be a strong witness impacting this community for good and, and for you. Continue to help us to grow into the church that you have called us to be. And once again, we just give you thanks for those who have gone before us. We are so blessed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We pray all these things in the precious and powerful name of Jesus and continue to pray as he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Knowing that all that we have and all that we are belongs to God, let us offer unto him his rightful tithe, our offerings and ourselves. The ushers, please come forward.
Thank you, friends. guide the use of these gifts that they may be used to further your kingdom so that more and more and more may come to witness to their faith so that more and more and more may come to know you are worthy of their trust bless the gift and the giver in Jesus name amen and I now invite you to uh, remain standing and uh, we'll sing our Next hymn, number 156, I Love to Tell the Story.
be seated. I, one, one thing. Sorry. Always throw in the liturgist curves, okay? I just wanted to go over those words again. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. Telling the story satisfies my longings as nothing else can do. How about that? I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, it did so much for me. And that is just the reason I tell it now to be. I love to tell the story, it is pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it, more wonderfully sweet, yes. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell this story for those who know it best, seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And then, and when in scenes of glory, I sing the new, new song, it will be the old, old story that I have loved so long. Just wanted to make sure we got that. Okay, thanks. Today's scriptures lesson comes from John one thirty five through forty six. The next day, again, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two of them who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means Christ. He brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, So, you are Simon, the son of John? You shall be called Cephas, which means Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Colleen. Join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds and our actions in response be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I am blessed with wonderful friends. I could say this about most any of them, but I'll pick my prayer partner. I can tell you she's a wonderful person, completely sold out for Jesus, compassionate, creative, intelligent, has a good sense of humor and someone you should really get to know. I can tell you enough so that you will want to meet her, but I cannot create a relationship between the two of you just by telling you about her. Until you actually meet her and get acquainted and spend time with her, you won't really know her. The best I can do is point you in the right direction and introduce you to her. <laughs> Keep that in mind. 
Today is the last in a seven-week series on discipleship. The first sermon was on becoming a disciple. The second was looking at our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. After that, we began to look at our membership vows that include, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? October 2nd, we began to take a, a week to look at each part of that vow, beginning with participating faithfully with our prayers, and I added scripture reading. Then on October 9th, we looked at making our presence in worship a priority. Then on the 16th, we examined our vow to serve Christ with our money. Our focus last week was service, putting our faith to work. Today, we will concentrate on the last part of the vow, namely serving Christ with our witness. Hear the vow again. Will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I think I, I mentioned to you before that the words and your witness were added to the membership vows in 2008. Okay? And appropriately so. Our call to worship mentioned the great cloud of witnesses from Hebrews 12 relating to All Saints Day, which is actually November 1st, and that's why the pyramids are white today. This is also Reformation Sunday when we celebrate Martin Luther's work to bring about the Protestant Reformation in 1517, which was certainly also an amazing witness. So what is a witness anyway? A witness is someone who tells what they've seen, heard, and experienced. So for our purposes, a witness is someone who does just that, communicates what he or she has experienced in Jesus Christ. Keep that in mind. In Acts 1, just prior to his ascension into heaven, Jesus tells the disciples that the Holy Spirit will come upon them and that they will be his witnesses. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 doesn't say, you might be my witnesses. Jesus says, you will be my witnesses through the power of the Holy Spirit. Looking at this morning's passage that Colleen read for us, what you may not realize is that John the Baptist had disciples before Jesus did. The passage tells us that one of John the Baptist's disciples is Andrew who heard Jesus and spends a day with him and then what does he do? He goes to tell his brother Simon that he has met the Messiah and he brings his brother to Jesus. Upon meeting Simon, Jesus then calls Simon by a new name, Peter. What if Andrew hadn't brought his brother to Jesus? Peter played such an important role, as we can see in all four Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Peter also played a huge role in the book of Acts, as we read in Acts chapter 2. Um, Peter gets up on Pentecost after the Holy Spirit has come upon him and the other disciples. He comes out of, of hiding with no more fear of arrest and preaches freely in the city. And 3,000 people come to Christ that day. Yeah, Peter. What if Andrew hadn't introduced Peter to Jesus? Andrew was a witness to Peter, and Peter was a witness to multitudes. What if Andrew didn't bring Peter to Jesus? Andrew brought people to Jesus one at a time. Peter brought people to Jesus in large groups. Both are vital. If we read on in the passage, we see that Philip responds to Jesus' call, follow me, 
And then, like Andrew, shares the good news. Philip finds Nathaniel, probably the same person who is called Bartholomew in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke's listing of the disciples. Philip identifies Jesus as the fulfillment of the promised Messiah from Scripture. And then he identifies Jesus as the way commonly used to distinguish one man from another. Philip identifies Jesus, the son of Joseph of Nazareth. Philip told Nathaniel what a wonderful person Jesus is and that he is the long-awaited Messiah. He shared the excitement of his new relationship, but Nathaniel wasn't convinced. How could anyone as wonderful as the Messiah come from such a common place as Nazareth? As I learned from our guide on one of our trips to the Holy Land, the happening city at that time was Sepphoris, not Nazareth. Nazareth was some podunk little town. Apparently, to sophisticated Nathaniel, Jesus' hometown was reason enough to question that he was the Messiah. <laughs> I hope no preconceived notions impede us from entering into a relationship with Jesus. Philip could have gotten into an argument with Nathaniel, but to his credit, he didn't. He didn't say, you idiot, I'm telling you, this guy's the Messiah. And he didn't know. What did Philip say? Come and see. Come and see. Friends, it's not a witness's job to argue, but to share what we've experienced. Come and see. A simple invitation to meet Jesus. And to Nathaniel's credit, he didn't refuse Philip's invitation. He made the effort to go and meet Jesus himself. But if he hadn't, it wouldn't have been Philip's fault. Hear that. Philip gave the invitation. It was up to Nathaniel to respond. How people respond is not up to us. There's a story about um, Aldous Huxley who wrote Brave New World. Huxley was an agnostic who was with a group of other men on a Sunday morning. And as most of the others prepared to go to church, of course, Huxley did not. He approached a man known to have a simple and radiant faith. He said to the man, suppose you don't go to church today. Suppose you stay here and tell me quite simply what your Christian faith means to you and why you are a Christian. But the man said, you could demolish my arguments in an instant. I'm not clever enough to argue with you. Huxley said gently, I don't want to argue with you. I just want you to tell me simply what this Christ means to you. The man stayed and told Huxley of his faith. When he had finished, there were tears in Huxley's eyes. And he said, I would give my right hand, he said, if only I could believe that. See, it wasn't clever argument that touched Huxley's heart. It was the simple presentation of how Jesus had changed the man's life. Now, I don't know if Huxley ever came to trust Jesus for himself or not. I hope he did. But did you see how the man shared his faith? Would you be ready to do that if someone asked you the same thing that Huxley asked the man? That's what we're called to do. So are we ready? Do we love to tell the story of Jesus and his love as we just sang? Or do we just love to sing the hymn? Oh, now you're meddling, Nance. Yep. Do we like the hymn? Or do we do what it says? Do we love to tell the story? They're not the same thing. Friends, our Lord is always calling us to be his witnesses. Are we listening? What's your story? Are you ready to tell it? I told you before about being given an opening um, when somebody said I had a nice smile and it gave me an opening to say Jesus gives me a lot to smile about. 
pray for an opening. God will provide, trust me, every time I've prayed for an opening, it has happened. Family is the hardest, for sure. Okay? Family is the hardest to share with, for sure. Pray for an opening. As I said, how people respond is not up to us. It's our job to tell our story of how Jesus has transformed our lives and how he is worthy of our trust. Andrew, Peter, Philip, Nathaniel, you, me. All of us have been called by our Lord. Jesus is counting on us to be his witnesses. There's some question about whether this exchange ever really took place. But the story goes that the theologian, Dr. Paul Tillich, was on the faculty at the University of Chicago Theological School. One day when the public was invited, the story goes that Dr. Tillich spoke for two and a half hours, in his mind, proving that the resurrection of Jesus was false. He quoted scholar after scholar and book after book, He concluded that since there was no such thing as the historical resurrection, the religious tradition of the church was groundless, emotional mumbo-jumbo, because it was based on a relationship with a risen Jesus who in fact never rose from the dead in any literal sense. He then asked if there were any questions. After about 30 seconds, an old preacher stood up. Dr. Tillich, I've got one question, he said as all his eyes turned toward him. He reached into his sack lunch and pulled out an apple and began eating it. Dr. Tillich, and he took a couple bites, my question is a simple one. Took another couple bites. I ain't never read them books you read, Greek. I don't know nothing about Niebuhr or Heidegger. And he finished his apple. All I want to know is, this apple I just ate, was it bitter or sweet? Dr. Tillich paused for a moment and answered in exemplary scholarly fashion, I cannot possibly answer that question, for I haven't tasted your apple. The white-haired preacher dropped the core of his apple into his crumbled paper bag, looked up at Dr. Tillich and said calmly, Neither have you tasted my Jesus. The thousand plus in attendance couldn't contain themselves. They erupted with applause and cheers. Dr. Tillich thanked his audience and promptly left the platform. I have a couple books of Paul Tillich from seminary. Consulting them after reading this story, I can't find anything that necessarily disputes the point of view he had in this conversation with the old preacher. I don't know if Tillich died believing that the resurrection never happened. I hope not. Friends, when others ask us or when we feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to share Christ with someone, may we simply tell them our experience followed by, come and see. See for yourself who he is. And if we're still searching ourselves, may we have the courage to come and see who Jesus is for ourselves. Josh McDowell said something to the effect, going to church doesn't make one a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes one a hamburger. (laughs) Coming to church doesn't make us a Christian. We needn't fear having questions. Christian recording artist Michael Card has written a song entitled, Could It Be? Some of the words go like this. Could it be you make your presence known so often by your absence? Could it be that questions tell us more than answers ever do? Could it be that you would really rather die than live without us? Could it be the only answer that means anything is you? Friends, come and see. Andrew invited his brother Peter to meet Jesus. He was a witness. 
He told what he had seen, heard, and experienced. Do we do that? Is your name Andrew? In the sphere of influence to which God has called you, do you share your faith in Christ when an opening arises? Is your name Andrew? Is your name Philip? Do you say to people, come and see? May we be grateful to those who introduced us to Jesus. And may we, like Andrew and Philip, point those around us to Jesus. I've shared before that prior to going to seminary, I was a special education teacher for six years. The last five at Kander High School. I was getting my MS ed at what is now called Binghamton University, part-time. After a full day of teaching, I was driving my Dodge Aries K car to class. Yes, I hear the snickers. Yes, I do. Okay. It had only AM radio, no FM, no tape deck, no frills. I was on my way to class at Binghamton University, actually driving through a Wego, believe it or not, I was stopped at the light in front of Dunkin' Donuts. When on my AM radio in the car came the song that could only be considered an oldie, Downtown by Petula Clark, remember? I heard the words, take all your troubles, take all your cares and go downtown. Now, I was alone in the car, but I remember saying out loud, that won't help. <laughs> right there in the car, God gave me words that make more sense. And he helped me to remember them until I was in a place where I could write them down. See if these words make more sense to you. And after eating all that chocolate, um, that's why I've got the water. My voice is probably going to be worse than usual, but at least I can blame it on the chocolate today. So again, see if these words make more sense. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go to Jesus. When you've got worries, call on him and he'll help. I know Jesus. Just observe the order he can bring into your life. Offers you his peace, how can you lose? He is the light, life so much brighter now. Lay down your troubles, lay down your cares at his feet. Jesus, he'll be with you always. Jesus, there's no finer place for sure than with Jesus, and he's waiting for you. Let your problems surround you claim his peace Jesus maybe you think he won't listen to you but he loves you so Jesus listen to the harmony he'll blend into your life you can sing his praises before this night is over joyful you'll be he is the light life so much brighter now lay down your troubles lay down your cares at his feet Jesus, he'll be with you always. Jesus, there's no finer place for sure. Go to Jesus, and he's waiting for you. And you will find somebody kind to help and understand you. Someone who cares for you and offers a gentle hand to guide you along. He is the light, life's so much brighter now. Lay down your troubles, lay down your cares at his feet. Jesus, he'll be with you always. Jesus, there's no finer place for sure. Go to Jesus, friend, he's waiting for you. Go to Jesus, he'll be with you always. Jesus, don't wait a minute more. Go to Jesus, friend, he's waiting for you. He's waiting 
for you. He's waiting for you. Go to Jesus. Friends, that's part of my story. What's yours? No one can argue with your story. Jesus is counting on us to be his witnesses. Go tell. Now closing him. Shine, Jesus, shine. Do not be shy the way you sing this. Uh, 2173 in the faith we sing, or on the wall. And I'm going to sing it like I learned it in Chrysalis, so, okay. All right. Thanks, Susie. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> shine, Jesus, shine to this land. The Father's glory blaze, spirit blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word.
Did you catch that last verse? As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness. Ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored here may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Or shine through me. Shine through me. Maybe so. Jesus Christ, go forth in peace and in joy, telling your story. Christ is counting on all of us. Go tell. May, your, may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go with you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>